common types of thermal breaks. Welcome to Building Knowledge 101. Explore the common types of thermal breaks, including the differences between thermally improved, thermally broken, non-composite, and composite thermal breaks. Now let's talk about some common types of thermal breaks. So what I, I want you as architects to understand, there's a lot of options that you have to choose from. So we wanted to know how to choose a thermal break, get the right one that you're looking for. Now the first thing is thermally improved. AMA defines two different levels of thermal break. One is called thermally improved. The goal of a thermal break is to introduce non-conductive material and to separate the metal on the outside from the metal on the inside. So a thermally improved system has a thermal separation or a separation of the metal on the outside and from the inside of less than or equal to 0.21 of an inch. That's thermally improved. Now the next step up is what's called thermally broken. AMA says that a thermal separation of greater than 0.21 of an inch is considered thermally broken. So you've got two different types of thermal breaks, thermally improved and thermally broken. When manufacturers start looking at designing thermal breaks to go into their framing systems, the thermal break has to stand up to the same forces and strains that the non-thermal frame or aluminum frame is going to stand up to. So the thermal break has to perform as strong as the frames in order to be efficiently used on an elevation. So the first force that we look at is called tension. Tension is the symmetrical force by the wind load on the neg back side of a building, the negative wind load on intermediate verticals or horizontals. So you've got force on both sides of the thermal break. So that would be some intermediate horizontal or vertical that has glass on both sides of it. The next force is called torsion. Now torsion would be around the perimeter, the head, the sills, the jams, where you've got one line of glass in the frame. So you've got more of a prying action or a twisting action occurring. So it's not symmetrical, it's asymmetrical on one side of it. Then the last is called shear. Shear is when you have force opposite sides of the thermal break moving in different directions. You've got movement up on one side, down on the other, and that's going to test the bond to the joint between the thermal break and the aluminum frames that are in it, around it. So shear occurs when a frame bends, and I'll show you an illustration of that here. Wind load. When wind blows and hits an elevation, you've got positive wind hitting on one side, pushing the frames in. Then as the wind wraps around to the other side of the building, you have negative loads pulling the frames out. So your thermal break is going to be subjected to bending inward and outward throughout the day, throughout the year, nonstop. So the break has to be designed to hold up to that force. When manufacturers look at providing thermal breaks, there are going to be two types. One's considered non-composite. If you see in the illustration here, as a frame bench, you can see the three sections. One is the exterior cover here, then the thermal break is this black line, and then the interior extrusion here. These are three separate components snapped together, joined together to create that thermal separation. So you've got probably a polymer clip or some type, and I'll show you an illustration in a moment. But this is non-composite because the three parts, the interior, the thermal break and then the cover on the outside are three separate pieces that don't work together. As they bend, they slide alongside each other. Now compare that to a composite where your parts are joined together. Now you can see when the frame bends, all the pieces bend together. The interior bends, the thermal break bends, and the cover on the outside. So they're working together as a single composite joined. Makes for a stronger extrusion, stronger frame when they're joined together like that. So a little more of an example here of a non-composite. This is a curtain wall system. This is a non-composite thermal break. You can see we have a mullion on the interior heater, cover on the exterior here, and then joining those together is a polymer clip that snaps into the neck of the curtain wall on the interior and then the cover is pushed into that, snaps together. So now it's joined and throughout the system, you have cover on the outside, moya on the inside, and a polymer clip between the two joining them together. So that's a non-composite thermal break in a curtain wall system. Here's an illustration of a composite system. We have two aluminum tubes and between them is a polymer tube that's bonded between the two of them and they're chemically connected together. So as we apply pressure to it, the three bend together as one, and they add strength to each other because they're bonded together. So those are your options with different types of thermal breaks, non-composite and composite. That is all we have time for in this video. If you'd like to watch more of our 101 video series, subscribe to our YouTube channel, 
Conair Company, Inc.